Welcome to this video on angle proofs. So a geometric proof is a logical explanation of why a geometric statement is true. And a proof consists of two columns. There is a statements column, and that is what you're trying to prove to be true. And then there's a reasons column, or sometimes it's called justifications, and that is why each statement is true. All right, so this is kind of like the what. So what is true, and this is the why, why it is true. All right, so when you start getting into proofs, there are going to be some common things that you use for reasons. So let's talk about those now. The first one is given. So in every proof, you'll be given some information, and you always write that as your first statement. And the reason you know that is true is because it was given to you. So that's going to be the first reason in every proof. All right, the next one is the subtraction property. And that is when you can subtract something from both sides of the equation and it still remains true. So in this example, I can subtract C from both sides and I'm left with A equals B. I didn't change the value of the equation. I just subtracted the same value from both sides and that is totally fine. Another example, the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 equals the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3. I can subtract the measure of angle 2 from both sides. So normally you're going to see this when you have the same thing on both sides. And you subtract it and then you just write what is left. Alright, while we are here, let's go ahead and stop and fill in these important symbols. So the first symbol means congruent or equal. You use the congruent symbol if you're talking about an actual figure, so like a triangle is congruent to a triangle. The next symbol is parallel, two lines that never meet. And then this means measure, so the measure of angle 3. So the degree measure. Alright, the next common reason that you will see is the transitive property. And an example of that, if A equals B and B equals C, then we can conclude that A equals C. Or another example that you'll see with these angle proofs, if the measure of angle 1 is 78 degrees and the measure of angle 3 is 78 degrees, then we can conclude that the, the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 3. Because if two things are equal to the same thing, then we can say they are equal to each other. All right, and then the last one is the substitution property. It is a special type of transitive property. So if A equals B, then B can be substituted for A. So for example, the measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle three. And the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three equals 85. So I can substitute 1, 4, 3 in any problem. So I can change out this measure of angle 3 to the measure of angle 1 because I know they're equal. I can substitute one for the other and it still keeps the equation true. Okay, so let's try some examples. So in a proof, you will always be given some information and then you'll be told what to prove. A lot of times you'll have a diagram given to you and then you'll have a two column proof for you to fill out. So remember, this is the statements column. This is what you're saying is true. This is the reasons column. This is why it's true. Okay, so in this example, all the statements have already been given to you. So we just need to fill out the reasons. So the first statement is always going to be whatever information you are given. And you're going to write given. And then next, angle 3 is equal to angle 6. So let's look at our diagram, angle 3 and angle 6. So the reason we know those are congruent is because they are alternate interior angles. And you can put alternate interior angles are congruent. All right, and then six and seven. 
The reason we know those are congruent is because they are vertical angles. Vertical angles are always congruent. All right, and then the last thing, three and seven, those are corresponding angles. However, we can't use that as a reason because that's what we're trying to prove. So we can't use the proof as a reason. So we need something else. So the reason I can say three is equal to seven has to do with these two steps. So because three is equal to six, and seven is equal to six, then I can say these are equal to each other because they're both equal to angle six. And that's an example of the transitive property. All right, let's do a couple more. So this one, we're trying to prove that angle one and angle three are vertical. And the first reason, remember, is always given. So it tells us they're vertical angles. We're trying to prove that they are congruent. Number two says the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two equals 180. And then it also tells us that the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three equals 180. The reason we know those equal 180 is because they're forming a straight line, or we can say they are linear pairs. All right, and number three, the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two equals the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three. The reason I can say that is because both of these expressions are equal to 180. So I can say they are equal to each other. That's an example of the transitive property. All right, and then the next statement says me the measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle three. So what I have done to get from three to four is I have subtracted the measure of angle two from both sides. And all I'm left with is the measure of angle one and the measure of angle three. So that is the subtraction property. All right, and then the last statement is very similar to number four. The only difference is it doesn't have the measure symbol. And the reason we can say that is because equals and congruent basically mean the same thing. If two things are equal because their measures are equal, then those two figures have to be congruent because that is the definition of congruent. They are equal in measure. All right, go ahead and pause the video now and try the last one by yourself. Okay, so you should have gotten given for number one. Number two, these are linear pairs. Five and seven, they form a line, and then seven and eight form a line. Number three, that would be the transitive property. Because this is equal to 180, this is equal to 180, so I can say they are equal to each other. Number four would be substitution, or sorry, subtraction. Because I have subtracted the measure of angle seven from both sides. And then the last one should be a definition of a congruent. All right, you can go ahead and stop the video now and complete the angle proofs practice and check with your teacher.